Cindy jumped back in fear, tripped and fell to the floor. She looked up at the figure. It was a woman. Long dark hair and uh, yeah, she was soaking wet. Cindy was screaming like a maniac. She didn't know what to do. When suddenly... Whoa, whoa! Hey there, there darling! Cindy instantly stopped screaming. Did that woman actually just... Tell her to cool it? There we go. Easy. I'm not going to harm you, darling. I was basically dragged here by you. And thanks, by the way, for... Wait. You can see me? You can hear me? Uh, either that, or I've completely lost my mind. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry for the scare, little darling, but I haven't spoken to someone in what feels like 150 years. What's your name? Sydney Rossent. Who are you? I'm Miss Natalie Furton. I'm a... <clears throat> I was a costume maker for Crendon Theatre. That bracelet around your wrist? That's one of my designs. Oh my god, I didn't even realize I was still wearing this. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to steal it. <laughs> Don't worry, honey. I know you're not that type of girl. Just as long as you take it back tomorrow. Hmm. You were the girl that auditioned with the mom law from the fields of London, right? I haven't heard that passage in what seems like years. Come to think of it. The last girl that did looked a lot like you. My grandma was a star of Crindon stage before. She even gave me the monologue herself when I was a little girl. I knew it. Look, honey, I know this is going to sound weird, but extremely long story short, there's a reason that no one reads that passage on Crindon's stage. It's a lot like Macbeth. Just a cursed monologue that takes the cursed part to a whole new level. What am I even supposed to do with all of this? How do I make you go away? Oh, um, no offense. No, I get it. Meeting the lives that built and maintained Crandon Theater is not as important as your star role, am I right? Oh, no, it's not that. I just don't think I can physically handle this ghost presence. Listen, honey, in order to make this go away, you have to help us. Us? Yes, ma'am. Not all of us, mind you. But there will be one spirit in particular that will need your help and who can break your curse. Those who you need help We'll come to you and ask personally. We do have a sense of respect. Just try your hardest and with the info they give you, and when the right one moves along, everything will return to normal. It's as simple as that. I mean, I guess it could be kind of cool to meet people from when the theater first opened. That's the spirit. No pun intended. <laughs> now, for tonight, I'll leave you. Yes, spirits need rest as well. But on Monday night, we'll come back to the theater and we'll meet some of my friends. They'll just love you. Night, darling. And again, sorry for the scare. Natalie disappeared into the mirror. Sydney exhaled and immediately showered in cold water. But she felt no different. She would have to wait until Monday night when she wandered this stage for the second time, if 
what she was feeling was actually a reality. She couldn't help but feel numb to the thought of her being able to see ghosts. How was she going to help them? Is this some kind of dangerous curse keeping the spirits there? Was she going to host them? Thoughts kept spiraling out of control, and eventually she just looked at a picture hanging in a hallway. It was a picture of her grandma and her after one of her shows. Her grandma had on the exact same bracelet she was wearing right now. She wondered if her grandma knew that this was going on. I mean, why else would she have given her that piece? In her room, she dug through her nightstand for a journal that she hadn't been using lately and began taking notes. She wrote down different things she remembered about Miss Natalie, right down to how they died features. Sydney had no idea why she felt the urge to be as detailed as possible, but she knew that if her grandma, if her grandma gave her that monologue, it was for a reason. I'm not going to let you down, Grandma. I promise. Sydney said, holding her locket. Later that morning, Sydney was woken up by a phone vibrating against her face. She picked herself up quickly and brushed her long red hair out of her mouth. Hello? Sydney said, still waking up. Hey, Sid, I was, uh, uh just calling to, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. I was worried after you asked me if you did your audition last night. I wanted to call to make sure you were okay, or alive, at least. Adrian, you're sweet to call, but really, I'm okay. I ended up passing out from the adrenaline once I stepped off stage. You what? You didn't mention you passed out. Are you sure you're okay? That sounds incredibly serious. Adrian suddenly blurted out. Your face is incredibly serious. Adrian, relax, all right? I'm okay. I don't have a concussion, considering I was up until like three last night with no pains or hallucinations. Or maybe I do have one. Never mind, I'm all right, really. And excited about being able to do this show with you. All right, Sid. I trust you. Hey, I've taken up enough of your time, huh? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you at rehearsals on Monday. Scene partner. Uh, yeah, uh, see you there, scene partner. Sydney said, blushing slightly at the thought. She hung up the phone, hopped out of bed, and stood in front of a mirror, mimicking the different romantic staples of theater. She tried on different gowns and dresses she had in her closet, creating a whole fantasy around a specific outfit. She couldn't help but get lost in the moment of one particular gown. A bright red sequin gown that hugged her full frame and lit up a room better than the sun. Seeing the light reflected against her dress made her feel as if she was being swarmed by paparazzi at a red carpet opening of her next big show. She closed her eyes and imagined each of the twinkling lights as a camera flash. The adoring public coming from all around just to see her perform. Her family would have their very own box, being able to be treated like nobility as they should. The roar of the applause as the curtain call came was hypnotizing. The crowd loves her, and she would become unstoppable. Her bubble burst as she received a knock at the door. When she went to answer it, it was her doorman, there to deliver Sydney a single red rose with a navy blue ribbon attached. When she asked who deliver it, the doorman shrugged and said that it was some pretty boy with uh, blonde hair and that it came with a card. The card read, See you Monday. Ian. She said under her breath. The doorman dismissed himself and left. It, it was like something out of a soap opera, the protagonist who gets the lead role in the show and eventually has all the guys pining after her for no reason other than the fact that she was just nice to them for one time or another. <sighs> Sydney knew she was going to have to tread lightly, especially with the producer of the show. One wrong move and she could be responsible for shutting down the whole thing. She placed the rose in a small veil with some water and placed it by the door. She removed the ribbon and placed it in a little memento box she had in her dresser, having the strongest feeling that it would come in handy in the future. She found it hard not to think about if Ian was the reason she was casted in the first place. Across all the potentials, the working girl was picked. Those kinds of things only happen in stories. Then again, ghosts were once part of that story also. So maybe she was living one big fairy tale. 
She was just hoping it wasn't one of those stories that someone ends up dying. 